This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the management of achalasia. So now in the lectures of the medicine we will be discussing uh, the management of every disease because we have already discussed uh, in the special pathology all the uh, pathophysiology of the disease so now we will be uh, discussing the management i will not repeat the pathophysiology if someone wants to revise the pathophysiology you can uh, see the means you can see the top at the top of the video you can see the link of the achalasia and so that you can revise that topic again and then you will be able to understand the management of achalasia so starting with the management of achalasia management means the diagnosis as well as the treatment of achalasia so first of all we will be moving on towards the diagnosis of achalasia how you can diagnose the achalasia first of all the diagnosis is the barium solo barium solo we can diagnose achalasia by the barium solo now what happens on the barium solo we see the bird beaks appearance it means that the esophagus is dilated proximally and it is very much constricted distally clear this i will show you the x-ray of this barium solo i will show you in the end of the video but you can just i am making a diagram here this is your for example this is your normal esophagus this is normal diameter of esophagus clear now in the uh, achalasia patient the esophagus will be like this much dilated and then in the end you can see this much constricted so that's why it will be looking like a bird beak appearance this is the beak of the bird and this is the bird i will show you in the end of the lecture clear so this is the bird beak appearance the dilated esophagus and the constricted distal part this is the bird beak appearance clear because we all know in the achalasia there are three uh, means main characteristic features lower esophageal sphincter will be constricted clear and there will be decreased relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter and obviously there will be a peristalsis in the lower part of the esophagus clear so these are the three basic characteristics of the achalasia now after barium solo the second diagnosis that we will do is the investigation you will do that is the manometry so uh, what is manometry manometry is basically the measurement of the pressure clear so whenever we will do the manometry so in manometry we will find that there is increased pressure at lower esophageal sphincter and decreased peristalsis this is the feature of the means this you will find on the manometry that there will be increased pressure at the lower esophageal sphincter and there will be decreased peristalsis in the distal part of the esophagus clear or you can say decreased pressure this is the manometry now one thing to be mentioned here that is very important that in the achalasia patient it is very important to do the endoscopy clear you have to do the endoscopy why this endoscopy you have to do because you have to rule out uh, or you have to differentiate between the achalasia and the pseudo achalasia clear achalasia and pseudo achalasia now what is this pseudo achalasia pseudo achalasia is basically the carcinoma or you can say adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma of your cardia region cardia means the uh, gastroesophageal junction just uh, present at the gastroesophageal junction that is the cardia so the adenocarcinoma of the cardiac region or cardia that is called as the pseudo achalasia why it is called as a pseudo achalasia because in this condition almost all the features of the achalasia are present means the clinical features are also present clinical features are also present and there the manometric features are also same to the achalasia clear the radiological features are also similar to the achalasia means all the features they are similar to the achalasia just the differentiating point that you will get that will be on the 
endoscopy you have to carry out the endoscopy in order to differentiate between the pseudo achalasia and the achalasia so that's why the endoscopy is very necessary in all the patients of achalasia why in order to rule out the pseudo achalasia that uh, if it is pseudoachalasia then you have to give the treatment according to it because it will be the adenocarcinoma of cardia that is very dangerous situation but achalasia you have to give it you have to give the separate treatment for achalasia so that's why to differentiate between these two you have to do the endoscopy that is very necessary step clear so these are the three investigations that helps you in the diagnosis of achalasia clear now we are moving on towards the second part of the management that is the treatment clear we will now carry out the treatment what is the treatment of achalasia basically the treatment options are two treatment options generally uh, you can say broadly uh, dividing it into the pharmacologic pharmacologic treatment and the second one is the non pharmacologic treatment clear now first of all the pharmacologic treatment what is the treatment it is first of all you will be giving the calcium channel blockers clear then you will be giving the nitrates cause to cause the vasodilation to relax the smooth muscles and calcium channel block also uh, they cause the means they prevent the contraction so that's why the uh, relaxation occur then you will be giving the botulinum toxin in this case clear this will also inhibit the release of the acetylcholine and in this way your uh, means re relaxation will occur clear so this is the pharmacologic treatment of the achalasia now we are moving on towards our non pharmacological treatment of the achalasia which consists of mainly two uh, you can say treatment options are present in the non pharmacologic one is the pneumatic balloon dilation pneumatic balloon dilatation or dilation now and the second one that is the surgical approach is the hellers operation clear this is these are the two non pharmacological options of the treatment treatment options so first of all is the pneumatic balloon dilatation in this obviously you have to insert the balloon and you have to dilate it basically the balloon diameter is 30 to 40 mm in diameter this balloon you have to insert it and you have to dilate it so that the uh, means the sphincter uh, becomes open now basically this uh, in this condition in this pneumatic dilatation what happens that there is a higher chances of perforation means the perforation is a very common complication of pneumatic balloon dilation so this perforation can be prevented by using a small uh, balloon means the uh, those balloons having the less diameter so the 30 mm diameter balloon is a, a small balloon and the chances by uh, of the the chances of uh, you can say perforation will be decreased by using the 30 mm diameter balloon clear and the you can say that the means you, uh, the there will be this is more effective the pneumatic balloon dilatation is more effective in the patients greater than 45 years old clear so this is the pneumatic balloon dilatation how you will uh, this is the treatment option now the second one that is the heller operation heller operation or you can say heller myotomy it is name is indicating myotomy means this is your esophagus this is your lower part of the esophagus this is your cardiac region is sphincter so you have to remove the muscles from this region myotomy means removal of the muscle you will be removing the muscle from this area and then or you can say muscle removal from the cardiac region and in this way what happens that this will be helping uh, helping you in uh, causing the dilation of the you can say sphincter clear so this is the heller myotomy whenever you will be removing the muscle so this will be helping in the dilatation so these are the two non pharmacological options for the treatment options for the achalasia so have you understand this now after this uh, one point that is to be cleared that is the uh, dysphagia that is caused by achalasia and what is the difference between uh, dysphagia caused by the uh, scleroderma there are two diseases 
एक्लेजिया एंड स्क्लेरोडर्मा बोथ ऑफ देम ऑब्वियसली दे विल बी कॉजिंग द डिस्फेजिया बट देर इज अ डिफरेंस इन द स्क्लेरोडर्मा इन द स्क्लेरोडर्मा एंड इन द एक्लेजिया how you will differentiate them you will be differentiating them by the manometry manometry in the scleroderma in manometry what you will see that there will be decreased uh, peristalsis and decreased lower esophageal sphincter tone while in achalasia there is decreased peristalsis but there is increased lower esophageal sphincter tone so this is the differentiating point of the manometry that this manometry differentiate between the scleroderma and the achalasia there will be decreased peristalsis and decreased lower esophageal sphincter tone in the scleroderma while there will be decreased peristalsis and the increased lower esophageal sphincter tone in the achalasia clear now Uh, there are certain complications of achalasia that is the squamous cell carcinoma can develop aspiration pneumonia can also develop so this is not that much important just you have to remember the management that uh, how you will diagnose and how you will treat it so now we are moving on i, I told you that i will show you the diagram of the x ray of the barium solo that is the bird beak appearance so let's move on so here you can see the diagram Uh, that there are uh, one is diagram showing the bird, and in this way you have you can make it clear about the bird beak appearance. That uh, the upper part of the esophagus you can see that this is dilated, and the lower part it is constricted. And they have shown you by making a bird so that you can easily remember the bird beak appearance. So just remember this diagram that whenever you will see the X-ray of the such type of the X-ray in which the esophagus is dilated, this whitish area is the barium. You have done the barium solo. This is the whitish area, and in the lower part you can see there is the constricted area. This is called as the bird beak appearance, which is a typical feature of the achalasia. And obviously, I told you that you will be uh, doing endoscopy to rule out the pseudo achalasia and achalasia. But this is very typical for the achalasia, the bird beak appearance. so we have done uh, with the barium solo and i showed you about the barium solo hope that you have uh, you clear your all the concepts about the achalasia about the management of achalasia if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz